We say every week to you guys that our mission as a church, uh, it's not just to gather here, although we do want to do that. That's an important part of our lives as believers. Uh, But we want to be the church of Jesus Christ. We want to make fully devoted disciples of all people. Like it's more and more and more. It's not just here, but rather we want to see the name of Jesus Christ lifted up in this place and among the nations. And so uh, what our hope is for anyone who would be connected to our church is not merely that you would attend, but rather that you would participate in the mission that Jesus Christ has called us to. You know, the, the Great Commission just before Jesus ascended into heaven. He said, I want you to go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And so uh, a couple of components of discipleship, we need to share the word, right? We go and we speak the gospel, uh, and then we teach men and women what it looks like to obey. And so for you personally, I hope that in your life, if you're a believer here, that you are growing in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ that you look to the Word and you listen to the Spirit and you're responding in obedience to Him in any way that He might be, be leading you. And so um, I'm thankful for our church and for what God has done and what God continues to do. Now today I have the privilege of getting to introduce you to, you may have met her before, uh, Devin Huddleston. She is a missionary uh, with STUMO. They work with students primarily on college campuses. And so uh, I'm going to invite Devin up to the stage and uh, we're going to get to hear a bit from her. Y'all give her a hand as she comes. We did put the pregnant lady on a stool. Um, It wasn't intentional, but in the first service, nobody could see us. So she's really a servant in in doing this. So uh, Devin, as we begin today, tell us a little bit about who you are. Kind of, she she grew up here. So uh, your family got some things going on family-wise a lot. So just kind of introduce yourself to us and tell us what's going on in your life. Yeah, so if we haven't met, my name is Devin Huddleston. Um, A lot of you might know me as Devin Bond. Um, My parents, Billy and Sandra Bond, are members here. Like he said, I grew up in Poto. Um, I graduated from high school 2014, and then I went to UCO, um, and I've been in Edmond ever since. I'm married to my husband, Easton. We've been married a little over three years now, and we have our first little baby joining us in December. Uh, We have a little girl joining our family, so we're super excited about that, but that's a little bit about me. Okay, so Devin, uh, she is from here, but she serves with an organization called STUMO, and so you you may not understand much about that, so could you talk us through what is STUMO, kind of what are you guys about, what do you do as a, a ministry? Yeah, So SUMO exists uh, to build laborers for Christ from the college campuses of the world. And our mission comes from Matthew 9, and that is when Jesus is gathered with his disciples and he sees a crowd of people and he says that they are, he's filled with compassion because they are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And so then he says to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to raise up labors and do his harvest filled. And so that is why STUMO or student mobilization exists. We want to see labors raised up. The harvest is plentiful. We believe that. And when we look on the college campus, we see students that are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. That's true everywhere, but it's specifically true on the college campus, just a lot of brokenness on the on the campus. And so um, that's why we exist. We are a ministry that really goes after and pursues the lost. So we aren't a ministry on campus that is like, hey, come to us uh, if you want to hear about God. We are a lot of times just actively going out. And so We are in the Greek life, the Greek system, we're in the sports teams, and we are intentionally pursuing those who are far from Jesus. And that's our hope that we will bring those that are, God will use us to bring those that are far from him to come to know him. And so we really uh, emphasize evangelism. We are always getting to share the gospel a lot with students, and that's our hope. And then we really prioritize discipleship. So after we see someone come to know Jesus, we want to, like he just said, Matthew 28, we want to teach them um, everything that God's commanded them and teach them what it looks like to follow Jesus. 
Good. So why is it important? We missed this in the first service. Um, why is it important to focus in on college students? Or what's the advantage, I guess, of focusing in there? Yeah, I am passionate about college students. It's when I came to faith. Um, and so I just believe that college students, are, they're super impressionable. They are making like big transitions. You know, they're leaving their family. They're trying to figure out who they want to be um, and just making a lot of big decisions for the first time on their own. And so we've just seen that college students are almost just very moldable and it's so it's really strategic to reach uh, college students. And so that's why I am passionate about college students, but I know that's not practical for everyone here to go and reach college students, but that is why I get to, I love getting to reach the college students because that's when I came to faith and we've just seen it to be really uh, just a crucial time in their life to where they are searching, they're, um, they're experiencing the brokenness of the world, they're kind of living for that life, and so it's a just a really unique time, those four years that we get to um, come in and come alongside them and share the hope of Christ with them. Yeah. One of the reasons I, I love what Stumo does, um, college, she said college kids are very impressionable, um, moldable, I think is what you said, uh, and it's true, and it's one of those times when uh, we see a lot of people exit the church and um, really, really struggle in their faith. Young people leave their home, their church, and then they wind up in a, a college setting on a university somewhere. And so, it, but it isn't just that the, the enemy has an opportunity. We have an opportunity as a church to engage well with students there, to make disciples, to reach out to unbelievers. And so, the beauty of it is college students generally don't stay uh, wherever they go to college, but they go all over the United States and all over the world. And if we can reach them with the gospel, we send out missionaries whether we intended to or not. And so it's just a, a great blessing in, in that regard. So um, you mentioned a little bit about your story, raised in church, knew the scriptures. I think you said before you served in Sunday school or vacation Bible school. What was it in your life that uh, brought you to a place where you're like, man, I'm not sure if I know Jesus or maybe I need to solidify some things. So tell us about that journey for you. Yeah, so like you said, I grew up in church. I attended church with my family. That was an important part of our lives. I, I mean, I knew the Bible. I knew Jesus had died for, for me on the cross. And so I got to college, and I met a woman named Brooke McKeever. Uh, Brooke is on staff with Sumo, and she just initiated with me. She would show up to my dorm with cookies and just kind of intentionally being my friend. I'm like, who is this woman? What is she doing? Um, but she sat down with me, shared the gospel with me one day at McAllister's, and she asked me, hey, Devin, if you were to die today, how sure are you that you're going to heaven? And I said, oh, 100%, I am good. I, and she was like, well, why are you so confident? And I was like, well, I'm a good person. I grew up in church. I've been baptized. I served at my church. I did VBS. Like, just go home to Poto. I know you're, we're far from there, but like, if you just went home and asked anyone in Poto, they would say like, oh yeah, Devin, she's good. And so I was very, very prideful, um, but just super confident in my own works um, and that saving me. And so she that day told me that I wasn't good enough. Uh, she told me that Jesus, trusting in Jesus was the only way that I could have a relationship with God. And that's the only way that I could be secure in spending eternity with Jesus. And so I was a little bit offended because I was like, you know, I've grown up in church. I've heard these, heard about Jesus my whole life. Like, how are you to tell me that I am not following Jesus? And so the more time I spent around Brooke, though, God just really showed me that I was not following Jesus. I was claiming it. I was playing the part, but I was not living for him. I saw in Brooke's life and even some older girls in my sorority, I saw in their lives how Jesus didn't just impact their Sunday mornings. Jesus impacted their day-to-day -day lives, and they were making decisions that honored him and just glorified him in their day-to-day -day schedule, and so therefore their lives looked really different, and so the more I spent time around them and the more they continued to share the gospel with me I just was it was just became very clear and evident to me like you are not you're not following Jesus like you say you are and so my freshman year I made the decision to follow Jesus and trust in him for my salvation rather than trusting in my own works I like how you said that oftentimes in our 
our church culture, we focus in on a moment, a, a decision. Um, I got saved, if you will. Uh, but what Jesus calls us to do is ultimately to follow Him. That's throughout the Scriptures. And so uh, if you find yourself in a place where you're like, oh yeah, I'm a believer, but you're not actually following after Jesus, it's a good time to ask some questions. And so I'm sure that was a difficult conversation for your friend to be like, you know, let's really talk about whether uh, you're a believer. But it's been extraordinarily fruitful. Like uh, in Devin's life, coming to know Christ, and then, uh, and I, I get to see the emails and, you know, hear the stories of all that God has done through her and her ministry. And so we're just really, really thankful for you and, and what you're doing. Now, I had a conversation uh, with a gentleman just a few weeks ago. Uh, we were sitting at, at Chili's uh, having a conversation there, and he, he said to me, and he's, he's been here, and maybe this is my failure as a pastor, uh, but he said to me, he said, um, hey, I've heard you mention the word gospel a lot. I don't know what that means. Could you tell me what the gospel is or what, what that means or what you mean when you say that? So could you, what is the gospel? What does it mean when we use that, that term? Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. Um, so the gospel, it's, it's really simple, but it's also really deep. And so the most simplest way to share the gospel or to say the gospel is that we were separated from God. We are separated from God because of our sin, but Jesus died on the cross for our sins and gave us a way to have a relationship with God. So if we turn and trust in Jesus, we can have a relationship with God. And so really, like I said, it's like you can say that and it's very simple. We are separated. Jesus made a way, and now we can have a relationship with him. Or you could spend hours or your lifetime, really, like actually d dissecting the gospel and talking more about it. And so, yeah, that would be the most simplest. That is the gospel. Jesus died for our sins and gave us a way to have a relationship with God. Yeah. So uh, last week we had Donnie Todd here from Center for Mission, Mission Mobilization, and so he does a lot of international sorts of thing. He's, you know, recruiting and training missionaries all across the world, which is amazing. Uh, we're excited for that. Uh, but what we recognize as a church is that Jesus has called us to make disciples wherever he has sent us. And for many of us, uh, we'll not spend any significant time overseas or in another state even, but this is where God has called us. This is our mission field. And so oftentimes, you know, we can get busy going about life and think that missions is something that happens in a distant place when in, in reality God has called us to do missions here. And so um, can you give us some quick tips or how would you share the gospel if you were living here in this city maybe uh, with a coworker or a fellow student for those who are uh, in school, maybe it's a neighbor, what would it, what, how would you recommend or uh, I guess encourage us to share the gospel with unbelievers here? Yeah, I would just encourage you all to be faithful where you are. God has me on UCO's campus, and so that's where I can be faithful. So just kind of looking around, where does he have you? Where You're in your neighborhood for a reason. You are at your job for a reason. You are sitting next to that classmate for a reason. And so kind of just viewing, just looking through that lens as you go your day to day. Um, and then I would also just recommend like praying for opportunities to share the gospel. Um, the, more, the more you're praying for it, the more not only is God get, wants to answer that prayer, but also you're just going to be more aware. And so maybe you're in the break room at lunch and you have 10 minutes to eat your meal and someone comes in there and sits down with you. And so if you are just spent that morning, you, set, you prayed for an opportunity to share the gospel, you're way more likely to engage with that person spiritually if you... Um, pray through that and you're kind of just thinking through that lens and wanting to share the gospel and take those opportunities. Um, did you ask for a way to share the yeah, gospel? Yeah. yeah. So I think one of my favorite ways to share the gospel is just through our, your personal testimony. And so what that is, is just sharing how you came to know Jesus. And I love sharing my personal testimony because no one can argue with that. I'm not trying to win someone over with an argument and telling them, why scripture is true or why I believe what I believe. I'm truly just telling them a story and how God changed my life. And I've just learned people are way more open to hearing a story a lot of times than they are of like, hey, let me talk to you about the Bible. Um, I do that too. We should talk about the Bible. But that's a lot of times my, the first way I'll share the gospel with someone is through my story, my personal testimony. And how I learned to share that was just really three parts. And so the first part is what your life looked like before Christ. And then you share, secondly, just how you came to know Christ. And that is where I share the gospel. So I don't just want to talk about my own life. I want to talk about what Jesus did. And so 
Secondly, I share the gospel and how I came to know him. And then thirdly, I just share how my life is different now that I am following Jesus. And so I would just encourage you all to know your testimony. The Bible tells us to be prepared to give a reason for the hope that we have. And so that is a way that you all can be obedient. We all can be obedient to that command is just knowing our testimony and knowing a quick way to share the gospel um, through our personal testimonies. A lot of times I can share my testimony and it could be like two hours because I want to share every little detail. But I think the most effective and a tool to have for sharing the gospel is learning your testimony in maybe like two minutes or maybe even a minute because sometimes that's all you have and maybe it's the person at Walmart checking out your groceries and you just want to share your story with them, the Holy Spirit prompts you to do so. You don't have time to share a two-hour story, but you do have time to share a two-minute story. And so I would just encourage you to think through your testimony and write that down maybe and just practice it. Talk to your kids about it. Share it with your spouse and know your testimony. That way you can engage in those conversations. And then it's really easy when that person sits down with you in the break room, you can just start talking about your life, share your story with them, ask them if they have a story, if they have a faith, and then you get to engage with them and hear their story too. That's good. Um, as, a, as a church and our membership covenant, there are six practices that we, we covenant to do together as a part of this body. And the first one of those is devoting ourselves daily. And I often speak about that in terms of spending time in the Word and in prayer with God, you know, devoting yourself daily. Uh, but Jesus actually told us, he said, if anyone's going to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And so part of that devoting ourselves daily is self-denial, you know, rather than pursuing the things that we want to pursue, um, it's taking up our cross and recognizing that God has called us to this place, to these people that we're going to interact with, whoever might come across our path in that day. He's done that on purpose, and we're supposed to bear, that's where we take up our cross, and we look for those opportunities. And so part of our daily devotion is, God, would you give me opportunities to share the gospel? And God, I'm terrified of doing that, but I'm I trust in the power of your Holy Spirit. We raised Jesus from the dead. He lives in me. And so we have to remind ourselves of what is true. But that does open our eyes to say, hey, uh, I'm here for a reason. I, I, you know, there's going to be people that need to hear the gospel today. So it's a little bitty reminder for us every morning, like, deny myself, take him across. I'm going to follow Jesus today. And so um, I, I love that we begin with prayer, trusting in God's power and not our presentation. Because uh, I'm sure you've had some failed presentations, things that didn't go so well. But again, we trust in God's power and not our presentation. So talk us through um, STUMO, the organization, a little bit about what your role is there, kind of their, the breadth, I guess, the various, uh, the sphere of influence for STUMO. Yeah, so SUMO, we exist on about 30 college campuses. Um, it's been awesome just as I've been a part of SUMO the past seven or eight years, getting to see us expand. And so we started around Oklahoma, Arkansas, those, those schools, but now we've launched to a lot of big schools in Texas. We are in Wyoming, Arizona. Um, but this year, even a lot of my, or some of my great friends and coworkers at UCO are launching to Mississippi State. So that's the first time to kind of head south. And then some of our OU staff are launching to Alabama. And so our hope is to one day see Sumo on every college campus. Um, and so we're really excited just about the ministry as a whole and how God is using it and growing us. We also have overseas teams, and so we are exporting um, labors overseas as well to take the gospel to people who have never heard it. Um, that's kind of Sumo as a whole. We have um, really, we have conferences throughout the year for our students and one of the big ones is called Kaleo. That's our nine-week discipleship program. So I went to Kaleo every summer as a student, and that is we call it like a spiritual greenhouse because you just get to separate from your life, your college life. You get to go and dedicate nine whole weeks to just growing in your faith. And so that's something that we do each summer that we just really value and God uses a ton. So 
Yeah, we had a couple of students uh, this past summer that got to go to Kaleo, and I got to hear about their experiences. And um, when she says separate from college life and, you know, really have this opportunity to grow, it's absolutely true, but you shouldn't hear some artificially easy environment. They work full-time jobs. I got to hear about life in the kitchen at a restaurant with the atheist fry cook and, uh, like, those sorts of things. But they, they place these students in difficult environments, but they're expected to live out their faith and do evangelism. I, I got to hear a lot of really great stories about not easy situations, but situations that would, would form us. And so that was a, a, real, a real blessing to hear that it was um, a challenge to, to young people to live out their faith. And so I, I'm excited about STUMO and what they're doing. How are you guys funded? Like, so how many people do you have on your staff at STUMO and how, how, how do you guys raise your funding? Yeah, so we have about 300 stateside staff, um, just amongst those like 30 campuses that I mentioned. And uh, STUMO is a nonprofit ministry, and so we uh, raise all of our support. Um, so what that looks like is just us building a team of people to partner with us monthly. And so I have a team of about 50 people that give monthly to help just support me so that I can do this job full time so that I can go engage with these girls at UCO and not have to worry about another job or just bringing in more income. And so um, that's kind of what that looks like for all of our staff. We get to raise funds and it's a joy to do because we get to partner with other people and bring other people into what we're doing because we realize that not everyone is called to ministry. And so it's awesome that my support team gets to be a part of girls coming to know Jesus, um, even though they're from Poto. A cross community has supported me for five years, and so I'm really grateful for this church, and a lot of the members individually support me here as well, and so it's sweet to get to send them a text or an email or a Facebook update and just say, hey, this girl came to know Jesus, and you were a part of that. Like, you might not ever get to meet Hannah, but Hannah will be in heaven one day, and you'll meet her there, and she got to know Jesus because you you give to me and I get to do this job. At Romans 10, 15, Claire just read through verse 14, but verse 15 says, and how can they preach unless they are sent? And so that's where my team comes in. I get to go and take the gospel to these girls because I have a team of people sending me to do so. That's wonderful. We, it's a privilege for us to partner with Devin and Stumo. Last time she came, she brought a young lady with her, and I was, uh, before we even left there, I was texting my college roommate like, hey, you need to support this young lady. And so I would want to say to you, if you're not invested um, somewhere outside of this church and you, you know, want to begin to give a wonderful organization, a lot of young people that are in need, they're getting started. Raising support is not easy. And so I would just challenge you to begin giving monthly I love when I see an email or an update come across my computer from Devin because I know she's been at work sharing the gospel, and there's a lot of great fruit. So could you just tell us a couple of stories about maybe young people that you've been able to uh, disciple or lead to faith in Christ? Yeah, uh, so the past four years, I've been working uh, with the UCO volleyball team. And the first couple years wasn't great. Uh, ministry is not always fun. I don't always have awesome stories to send in my letters, but the first two years was really hard. There were just a lot of girls not really willing to separate from the college lifestyle and didn't want to follow Jesus, which is okay. I just got to keep being faithful. And so God's been really sweet to just answer very specific prayers for girls. And he's truly done immeasurably more than all I could ever ask or imagine. Um, this year, so last year, I met four freshman girls and they, I just befriended them, had them in my home, spent time with them. I got to see, I got to share the gospel with all four of them and two of them came to faith this past spring. And so Katie and Mallory, I've been helping all of them walk with Jesus. The other two were already believers, but I've been discipling them, helping them grow. And it's been really neat because now they're sophomores and they've got new girls coming in on the team. And so I'm getting to talk with them about, hey, these girls might not know Jesus. Like, how can you uh, interact with them? How can you share the gospel with them? And so my friend Mallory, who came to came to faith in the spring, her and I got to share the gospel um, with a friend named Josie. She's a new girl on the team this year, and Josie actually, this doesn't happen very often at all, uh, but she texted me asking to get lunch because she wanted to talk, and I was like, 
hmm, this is odd. I don't know what she wants to talk about. But Josie had been in my home a couple times. Um, I had spent time around her and and the team. She texted me, and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to pray that this is something spiritual, that God's working in her heart, and she doesn't want to just talk to me about volleyball or something. And so uh, we sit down at Kidoba, and she says, okay, the reason I wanted to talk to you is because I want to know more about God. And I was like, whoa. Um, most of the time, I will say college ministry is like a bunch of blue messages of me just inviting, trying to hang out with girls, sometimes not getting responses. And so for her to just be like, hey, I want to know about God, I'm like, you just made my job so easy. And so we got to share the gospel with her. Josie came to know, came to trust in Jesus, but she told me that since her sophomore year of high school, she had been having questions about God and just about her faith. And didn't have anyone to ask. Her parents weren't believers. She didn't grow up in a church. She just didn't have any godly women or she didn't know of godly people around her that she could ask those questions to. And so when she met me, she thought, okay, well, maybe I can ask her. And so that was just such an encouragement to me. And I hope it's an encouragement to you to just know that people are searching. They are wanting to know about Jesus. A lot of times we can think that no one wants to talk about that. And so we don't want to bring it up. But that was encouraging for me to know that these people are searching and they're looking for hope and peace and purpose and Uh, We just have to engage with them. And so that was my friend Josie. She came to faith about a month ago. Then also my friend Hannah uh, came to faith about two weeks ago. She, we met together. I shared the gospel with her and she told me very straightforward. She was like, Devin, I don't want to do this. I want to keep living for the college lifestyle. She literally said to me, she said, I feel so dumb saying this, but I just think this is better than Jesus. And I was like, yeah, you are. That is pretty dumb. <laughs> you are wrong. But um, it was cool to just process that with her. I got to talk through John 10.10 10 that says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. And so we got to talk through, hey, Hannah, you might be experiencing joy in the party scene and boys and all of that right now, but it's not going to last. Like you might be fed up with it tomorrow or next week or Maybe it's in 10 years from now, but one day these things, you're going to see that they're all going to fail you. And so I told her that Jesus wouldn't. He came to give us life and life to the full and got to share my own testimony about how Jesus, like I just have purpose now that I'm following Jesus and uh, I got to share that with her. And so she left that conversation like, no, I don't want to follow Jesus. So I'm like, hey, that's okay. Uh, We met a week later. I just that whole week was begging God for her salvation and met a week later. We read the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son, and she's uh, just has tears in her eyes as she's reading how the son ran back to the father and the father ran after him. Uh, just hugging him and was so excited for the son, even though he had squandered all the wealth and done all these bad things to him, the father welcomed him home with compassion. And so Hannah said, I am the son. I've ran away and I've tried to live life on my own, but I want to follow, I want to run back to the father and I want to follow Jesus. And so it's been really fun. And now I meet with Hannah and Josie together and I got them both Bibles. I teach them how to read it, teach them the difference between old in the New Testament, like they just don't know anything. And so I get to walk through just like Matthew 28 says, we share the gospel and then we teach them to obey everything that he's commanded us. And so now I'm getting to walk through that with Hannah and Josie. And so it's been really, really awesome. And God's been super kind to just answer a lot of prayer. Yeah, praise God. That's amazing. I think we have a picture right up on the screen. So I don't know which two of these are. Can you Okay, yeah, so the, this is Hannah and Josie. So um, we were doing Bible studies, and they had brand new Bibles, and they just would spend forever trying to find a verse, which is really good to, like, figure out your Bible. But my sweet mom bought them uh, Bible tabs, so that way they could flip to the Bible much faster. Our studies, our Bible studies got a lot faster and more effective, but they're still learning their Bible too, but that was really fun. This is Josie again, and then I think I have a picture of Hannah, but these girls last weekend came to my baby shower. It's been really fun to just get to involve them in our lives. They spend a ton of time with Easton too, and it's awesome that they get to see just a godly marriage and a godly man, and um, 
yeah, they're just a big part of our lives, and we, we love them a lot. We go to every volleyball game. <laughs> Easton is more of a fan than I am. I think he'll be reading stats from other teams and just always updating me of what's happening. I'm like, great, I'll just keep cheering for UCO. This is awesome. So we, we love it. It's been a joy to get to do ministry with them. Oh, that's a blessing to hear. Um, final, final question here. Um, we're going to be praying. Like, um, individually as a church, we have our fall roundup coming up here just in a few days. And uh, there's going to be 1,500 people from our community. And it's an opportunity for us to serve and love and care for our community, but it's an, also an opportunity for us to share the gospel. And we're going to be very intentional about that. Some of you have already agreed to be table hosts and be there, you know, to specifically get to do that. And so we're praying for our community. We're praying for the nations. How specifically can we be praying for you and your family? You know, exciting things coming and then ministry-wise. Thank you, guys. Uh, I would say a big prayer uh, for East and I just as we are entering a new phase of life, like parenthood. I feel like there's, I read the books, I ask my mom friends the questions, but I'm like, how do you know all of this? And so um, just praying for our new season of life that we would be godly parents and just rely on the Lord through that. I think another big request with that is just the transition for me uh, with work. I plan to continue working for Sumo. I love my job. I want to keep doing what I'm doing. And so just kind of navigating what that will look like with with a child and just all of the change that will happen. I'm not great with change. So um, just prayers for that. And then ministry-wise, I would uh, say a big request is just for these volleyball girls to be laborers, that they would grow up in their faith and that they would pass on what they've learned. And just overall for our ministry to keep raising up laborers and God to use these people all over the world to reach, reach the world for Jesus. Amen. We want to pray for you right now, and I'm going to ask you as a church, would you pray for Devin and these young ladies and for Stumo, even as I, I pray for them? Uh, Father, um, thank you again for Devin and for her heart. We're thankful for what you've done in her, her life, uh, first of all, in saving her and giving her eyes that see and ears that could hear the gospel. Um, Lord, we just thank you uh, for what you've done there and then for what you're doing through her. Lord, we do pray that she would continue just to bless her. She transitions uh, soon to have a new baby, and I know that's got to be difficult to translate into a ministry context. Lord, we pray that, that this little baby would be born healthy and whole, that you would give them grace and wisdom as parents as they learn and grow. And then, Lord, wisdom that for how to integrate that with, with ministry. God, we know that you don't quit using us at any point in our lives, but rather you've called us to make disciples whenever, wherever we are, whatever season we're in. And so, God, we just ask for your grace there upon each of them. Um, Lord, we're really thankful for the gift of children and just look forward to the days of joy ultimately that are to come. And, Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would continue to send laborers into the harvest field to serve alongside Devin and her coworkers, Lord. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.